It's gonna be chilly this week here in Nevada, over by the Sierra Nevadas. Um, it's January 18th, 2021. Last time we were at Pyramid Lake, it was January 1st, really cold that day. Let's just say we caught a few fish. We didn't really end the day how we wanted to end it. We'll post a picture in this video on just a little bit of snippet on what happened. I don't want to go into the full details, but I think the picture will speak for itself. But um, yeah, Pyramid Lake, she's a monster sometimes. Just be careful if you are boating out there, that lake can turn bad instantly. Even if you are, you know, experienced boater, Pyramid Lake's not one to mess with. So I just want to end it on that one. Be careful on Pyramid Lake, she's crazy. But today we're gonna go over a do-it-yourself on how to troll Pyramid Lake with no downriggers. Especially this time of year when the water temperatures are super cold, it's pretty efficient and effective to troll without downriggers. You know, um, I love using downriggers. There's a lot of uses for them, you know, when you're kokanee fishing, definitely out up Pyramid Lake when you're trying to get those feet, fish, um, when you're trying to target those fish at lower depths, especially around October when they're chasing those bait balls, downriggers are super crucial. But you know, this time of year we can get by without using downriggers and uh, I found this way pretty effective, really cost efficient and plus, you know, you don't have to go spend money on downriggers. A couple bucks here and there on this hardware that I'm about to show you really goes a long ways on trying to get that lure on the very bottom of the surface. So we'll leave it at that. Um, like I said, be careful on Pyramid Lake. Uh, it's, it's a scary one, but hopefully this weekend's gonna be pretty nice. If the weather does time to start to take a turn for the south, we're probably not gonna go, but you know what? It's Monday, we're gonna prepare ourselves so that when we are ready to go and the weather does turn out really nice, we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. But today, what I'm gonna start with is of course, the rod. Um, me personally, everyone's gonna be a little bit different, but what I like to use out at Pyramid Lake or really any type of trout trolling, if you are gonna be doing that technique at a lake, I really like using like a seven and a half foot rod, maybe ranging anywhere from eight pound to 15 pound, um, but make sure that tip is a little bit softer than normal because when you're trolling, what's really effective to be watching for and uh, what I'm gonna show you this weekend if we do go out there is you really wanna be able to see that rod tip working because if you're not watching that rod tip and making sure that that lure is working all the time, then you're really not gonna be able to know if you're even trolling correctly because it's all about how the lure is working that day. Um, trout are super dependent on speed, how the lure is working, color, um, even what type of lure. So. When I'm trolling, I like to use a lot of snap swivels, especially by the, by the lure itself so I can actually change them out really quick so I can really just get to fishing super, super fast. Um, especially at Pyramid Lake when the water is a little bit rougher, you know, you don't want to be messing around out there, like I said. So I like to be able to change my lure real quick, get back down to fishing and be on with my day. So, like I said, rods, you know, seven and a half foot, really, you wanna be able to get it away from the boat, but try to be between eight and 15 pounds. You know, even at Pyramid Lake, you can even go up to your 20, 25 pounds because there are really big trout in that lake. Uh, hopefully we can show you that this weekend, but if you're just getting into it, you know, you don't have to get crazy. Get a really inexpensive, you know, eight to 15 pound rod with a soft tip, seven and a half foot, eight foot rod, you'll be okay. Um, Tackle. Um, so on my rods, I do like to run about a 12 pound, 15 pound monofilament on there. Um, I don't really get crazy on monotypes or brands. I just really go with what's really cheapest because I do like to swap them out. You know, every, depending on how much fishing I do that season, when I'm talking about the season, I'm talking about all year round because I do fish all year round. Um, I'm kind of changing my mono maybe twice a year, uh, just depending on how, like I said, how much fishing I actually do. I do a lot of trolling. 
Um, so, you know, as that you're working that line um, in and out all the time, it does get a little bit weak, damaged, so it's always good to just keep swapping it out, put fresh stuff on, because you never know when you're gonna hook that monster, right? Ooh. Come on so, up. what I really, really like doing for the most effective way to troll without downriggers is running a three-barreled swivel. Um, what that is, is pretty much this right here, if you can see that. It's just a little three barrel swivel. Maybe you can see a little bit better on my hand. But that's what I like running. Uh, so, if you could see that color, I did it on purpose. So this, this white one right here, that's my main mono on my reel. This one right here is my leader. So I run about a three foot leader or so. You can see it right here. So I run about a three foot leader, four foot. You can even go five foot, six foot. Um, some days might be different. I don't really like to get too specific on leader lengths, but you know, three feet works really well. And yeah. as you can see, now that I have my mono, my leader, and then right here is I, I have about a six to eight inch long dropper that I then hook various size weights do. So this time of year at Pyramid Lake, you could run anywhere between half ounce some days, or even up to like a full two ounce ball like this. Now when you're running these style weights, I don't really have a preference on whether I like the banana style or just the ball. It's really what's just cheapest at the store and what you can get available to you uh, I'm not really a stickler on using specific type stuff. You know, half the time you're probably gonna get snagged up anyways, because that's fishing. Um, and I don't like to lose expensive shit. I mean, gear, Oops, sorry. I don't like to lose expensive gear. So I don't really take it into too consideration on, on whether or not I like banana style or the ball style. But anywhere from half ounce, one ounce, one and a half ounce, two ounce, I don't really fish too much more than two ounces of weight just because a lot of times I'm running a sling blade, which is basically all of this stuff right here on the table over here. Let me show you real quick. It's on the table over here. On the table over here, we got, like I was talking, the sling blades. Now these are all about four inch sling blades. This one's a little bit bigger. It's probably about a six inch. Um, but a lot of these sling blades, I use them for kokanee fishing too. You know, a lot of these stuff you can interchange between rainbow trout, long and cutthroat trout out of pyramid kokanee fishing. So once you get the gear, you can reuse it. Don't ever think you have to keep buying new stuff just to go fishing somewhere else. Who knows? Try it out. Um, you'll never know what those fish are gonna be biting on, but if you're going for trout, typically, if you, if you are confident, I should say, if you are confident with a specific setup, why not try it out? Because that's what really this is all about, is I'm super confident with this cannonball style set up with this three barrel swivel that I just showed you. Um, I really like it. And like I said, just be confident with it. If you don't want to use it, I just thought it'd be helpful. And uh, this is just some easy ways to get around fishing this time of year without downriggers if you don't want to set it up in the cold. Because right now it's, it's cold. <laughs> um, this weekend is going to be a high of 39 degrees. I don't know.
hopefully it doesn't get windy. Now, these lures over here, right here are flat fish, or you know, a lot of people have different style of flat fish called apexes. They all basically have the same swim characteristics of what I really like to troll at pyramid with. Um, these are about three inch long. I go up anywhere to about the four inch. Those, that's about as big as I like to go um, because half the time these fish out of Pyramid Lake, they're, ta they're eating and chasing these tui chubs, um, especially in the fall time. They're chasing those giant schools, ch the bait balls as they call them. And that's primarily what their diet consists of. A lot of times they'll revert to eating bugs off the ground, but I really like using this style setup and these type of lures when I'm trolling out there. Another thing I want to talk about with lures um, is, especially out at Pyramid Lake, you need to be barbless. So all my barbs, I have, I have pinched, pinched the barb down. If you could see that, I have pinched it down, and. I personally like to fish barbless all the time, no matter what the regulations. Um, like I said, I'm a big fly fisherman. You don't want to be pulling out a fly that's just stuck you in the neck with barbs in it. Yet alone, just imagine what that fish feels like. Always want to be fishing barbless, especially for a conservation aspect. Um, a lot of you don't know my background. I graduated from UNR in 2016 with a bachelor's in wildlife ecology and conservation heavily in the fisheries aspect of it. Um, so it really hits near dear into my heart about treating these fish with respect, making sure that when you do catch these and you do release these fish, that you can properly release them back into the water and make sure that they are healthy and are gonna survive because the mortality rate of these larger fish, when you do stress them out and you know, it's fishing. It's going to happen. Those bigger fish, when you fight them for 30 minutes on the fly rod or fight them for 30 minutes on the trolling rod, even, um, those bigger fish, they're going to be tired. So you got to take care of them. Don't waste your time taking a lot of photos because they need to be in the water to breathe. Remember, wet your hands before you touch them because that's the biggest thing is touch them with wet hands. But on a side note, just remember, pinch your barbs. Um, I didn't really get into the spoons. A lot of people throw these off shore at Pyramid Lake, these little spoons like that. Um, super effective. I personally, when I'm shore fishing, I'm strictly fly fishing. I, I love fly fishing offshore from Pyramid, but I personally, I love being on my boat too. Um, plus I gotta justify it, right? Um, that's that. Um, so we went over flatfish, spoons, sling blades, dodgers, weights, three barreled swivels. This is another thing that I really like using. Like I said, snap swivels, especially when I'm trolling, always use my personal opinion, a snap swivel so you can interchange your baits really, really quickly. So, one last thing I want to show you guys is a. Those guys aren't helping, helping out worth the darn. We're gonna go fishing, fishing on pyramid, cash and diesel. So lastly, what I want to show you is what the whole setup's gonna look like. Like I said, this is just something that I rigged up earlier today that I wanted to kind of represent what it's going to look like in the water so up here i have my rod tip with my main line right there by my index finger we have our three barreled swivel on the bottom portion of that three barreled swivel we have our dropper or our weight and then we have it go down all the way down to our leader this one's a little bit longer it's about a four foot leader another snap swivel 
to the sling blade. And then I have on the end of that sling blade. Now this is where you can kind of get creative with it. You can get, you know, one foot, three foot, four foot. It all just depends. And then I have my lone little flatfish right there. Let me just hang that bad boy back up. I think the biggest thing that you can take home from this setup, if you do decide to use it or try it out, um, that three barrel swivel is super crucial. It just helps that weight, you know, sometimes spin around in the water if it ever gets a little bit tangled up. It just prevents that from wrapping itself around. Um, but when you're fishing this setup as well, we'll get into this Saturday if we get out there on the water, is you got to make sure that you're not just trolling in a straight line either. And what I mean by that is you, you need to take big sweeping S turns to try to get your gear moving in the water as much as possible. Um, like I said, I'll get into that on Saturday when we go out there, the weather holds up. But biggest thing that I could talk about right now is don't be afraid to change up your leader lengths either. You know, you can range anywhere between one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, you know, even up to five foot, I've caught them up. And what I mean by leader length is that leader between your sling blade and your lure. The other one, you kind of want to stick around three foot length leader just because you just don't want too much length between your weight and your sling blade because what happens is let's say you do make a big sweeping turn and that gear starts to fall real quick in the water column sometimes it will get wrapped up on e each other so just try to keep that leader length between the three barrel swivel and the sling blade at least three to four feet and you should be good also when you're letting this out on the lake you need to let it out really slow what I mean by that is keep your thumb on the reel itself or you can just pull it out one strip at a time. I really like doing that, you know, you can really keep an accurate count of how far it is behind the boat because what is really crucial to trolling as well is knowing the distance that they're kind of hitting those lures at behind the boat. Whether it be 80 feet, 120 feet, right now once it starts to become a little bit warmer in the late winter early spring those fish are kind of at the surface feeding a lot more because the surface temperature is a little bit warmer they like that kind of thermocline right there they might be a little bit farther away from the boat because they might be a little bit more skittish so run it at 160 feet behind the boat 200 feet keep playing around with it because you never know where those fish are going to kind of hit that sweet spot plus once you find that sweet spot you can accurately pull your gear out toward to that distance that you wanted to do let's say it's 120 pulls set it there every single time and fish on hook them in the face so i hope you like this diy on how to troll pyramid lake without downriggers i'm not trying to bash on downriggers i love using downriggers Hopefully we'll show you a lot of videos this summer, early spring, even late spring of us just slaying kokanee up at Stampede because that's what Brian and I love to do. Those little things are tasty. Um, but tomorrow, hopefully on Saturday we'll be hitting the lake. It's supposed to only be five to 10 miles an hour coming from the Northwest, I believe. Should be a good day. So if you like this video, just remember, give us a thumbs up. Uh, I don't really care what you do, honestly. Just, if you like the video, subscribe. Give us a little comment. Let us know what you want us to do in the future, and we'll give it to you. Later on this week, hopefully around Wednesday, Thursday, if the weather's holding up, I'll show you how I get my boat ready, what I like to do on my setup the night before just to make it a little bit easier when Saturday rolls around because, hey, we work full time um, and we got to, you know, do what we can during the week to help us weekend warrior during the weekend. That sounded funny. Weekend warrior during the weekend. So, like I said, we're out here. Trout Slayer. Remember, pick up your trash as well. I was fishing yesterday, was it? On Sunday. 
down on the track. Yeah, I saw so much trash. I picked them up, you know, just pick up your trash. That's all you can do. It was super slow on the truck anyways. You guys didn't miss much footage. I only fished for a few hours, but the day was beautiful. And we're going to hook them in the face this weekend. Just remember, like our page, subscribe, and we'll see you later. Thanks again, YouTube.